try that again. <laughs> let's try that again. Is that better now, Sean? Hopefully that's fixed that up. Goodness, it's one of those mornings, right? Technology's on my side. Is it a dark moon coming out? Anyone else into astrology? Um, no sound coming. Marielle, can you hear that better now? Sean, if you can, please give me an OK. Uh, I should have everything all plugged in now. So we're talking. Yeah, that's much better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Imagine that I would have been going through a whole thing. You'd see my face. Um, unfortunately, I don't do hand signs. So thanks for letting me know. All right, I'm going going to step back a few uh, a few steps. Talking about communication and working with a team. And so these are the lessons that I've learned, particularly growing growing my team and having a business uh, or businesses over the last few years, or even just sort of in work environments. Um, one of the biggest things that that I've realised where it either affected the results of um, uh, of something you're working on, um, affected the morale of your team and the people that you're working with, and also the just just not getting things done. You know um, that there were delays in things that uh, and, and and there was a mis mismatch in sort of expectations, and so all of these three main things lead to some level of dissatisfaction, and and obviously not not producing the results that you want. And so, how do you, when you're when you're incorporating um, and introducing a new team into your space, particularly when you're talking about remote teams, how do we how do we ensure that it's clear, it's concise, and it's reliable? What do I mean by that? So, being really clear is being clear on first, firstly when you are going to talk about something let's talk about projects we'll say it's a project right imagine you've got a project to execute we've got to be really clear as to when you what that project is about when you're going to talk about the project and i'm, I'm a big advocate for having team meetings to brief about things because things can all go oh you know it looks all good in in writing but miscommunication happens all right and if it's not clear then you produce things that are just way off. All right, communication needs to be absolutely clear. So when you're going to have that meeting to talk about that that project, what that what what you're looking to achieve from that project, what does what does done look like, and then to be able to then break it up into the tasks that are in that particular project and who is responsible for it. So, and then we need to put some deadlines around it. That was one of the, probably the, the, the big lessons that I've learned, that everyone has different priorities. Everyone has different things that are happening. And so if you don't put a priority on it and put a date around it, it just goes sort of flying in never, 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 never land, right? We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we need to be able to have some sort of task management tool um, that keeps you accountable as to what your priorities are. Helps helps you helps you work out your priorities and what are the things that you need to work on. So be really clear. We've got we've got who's responsible, what it is that, that person or whoever it is that's 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 responsible for that task is meant to do, um, the priority of it and time. So be really clear on those fronts, particularly, like I said, when you're working with a team and it's not just you, you've got to be clear as to who is handling what. As a business owner, the more that you're able to, one, obviously delegate the tasks that you don't need to be doing, uh, but two, have confidence that when you step away from that project, that things are happening in the background. And all you need to work on is to be able to say clearly when you're going to reconvene again and work out where where things are at. So be really clear. Um, concise as well is uh, it comes down to that sort of being clear and concise as to these are the things I want to achieve. Not too much fluff, right? Not to, just be, you know, say for example, um, when I'm making, um, when I need to make bookings with someone and I need my EA to be able to assist me, I'll be really, really concise. So it'll be this person, John Smith, Tuesday, um, 5th of May 
at 12 p.m. and the location will be um, cafe coffee whatsy so be really concise with that and and say uh, and say cafe coffee whatsy in blacktown all right and they may come back with some questions always understand that it's going to be uh, you need to be able to allow people to ask questions because what what goes on in your head does not necessarily translate to other people knowing what you're thinking about so always give people the the benefit of the doubt in terms of being able to ask and be clear with what it is that you want and if you really need to get on a call like there's there's always you know I see and I've, I went through this yesterday um, I had a partner who rang and said Cheryl I've given instructions to the service provider and it's totally off and I said okay I totally understand let me get on that call and I'll speak to them and this, this is where again it's all about a communication breakdown um, and we want to really avoid that because then that becomes just just laborious right you know it sort of drags things out and then be reliable right so we've been been clear um, concise and reliable what does that what does that mean it means that one whoever if you're responsible for a specific sort of task be reliable and make sure that you're sticking to the priorities and those deadlines again I'll confess, you know, when my team have asked me to do videos and all of that, I haven't been particularly reliable in that because here's the thing, because I look at and um, and look at all the other priorities that I have in my list and I have to make a choice as to what, what is priority. When it gets to a point where it's in the red in the red zone, then it becomes sort of top priority there. But again, I've got a level of accountability to whether it's my EA or teammates or clients or partners, I've got to be reliable because they need the whole the whole project relies on everyone um, pulling their socks up and being able to know that things things are happening. Um, don't think I've messaged John Smith, but I'll check into it. <laughs> John. Yeah, um, John, you know John. We all know. We all know John. I'd love to be able to hear, like, you know, what what have you come um, across in your your own experiences where it purely was communication breakdown right and what you would have done differently knowing the skills I mean with the experience that you have now and the skills that you have now I'd love for you to be able to share so whilst whilst we're doing that um, I want you to I want to share also uh, the tools that we use for effective communication um, number one is setting out in our weekly schedule when we're actually catching up with particular people. All right, so I um, I catch up with my EA uh, every Monday morning and every Friday as well. It can just be a call, it can be on Zoom, it doesn't really matter, but it's really to touch base, to, to set the tone of the week, and then at the beginning, and then at the end to really go, okay, let's have a debrief. How did everything go? What's outstanding? Who do we need to chase up? So if you've got a remote team, get into the rhythm of when you're consistently keeping up to, you know, keeping in touch with your team. It doesn't need to be every day. We know you're busy, right? But have at least one day in a week where your core team is meeting up for a team meeting make sure you have an agenda right? make sure you have an agenda that you're working towards because again you want to keep it concise not too much fluff you want to hit the core things in your business that you need to be working on so every time you're talking to someone any part of your team they know exactly what they need to bring to the table it's not a meet and greet it's not a social call you know you want to be able to connect with your team but they also in terms of leading them they need to know exactly what sort of information you need from them um, so set the tone of your communication for for the week secondly use tools use all the cool tools well not all of them Pick the tools that you feel that your team are on, all on board with to consistently use. And everyone needs to be on board for that. So we use Slack. Um, Slack is has been fantastic for us. 
um, it allows you to um, message on the computer or if you've got a smartphone you can message as well um, most if not all our, our sort of ad hoc communication happens there we have clients that we set up in the slack uh, workspace as well so we can communicate efficiently with them uh, but the really cool thing is that as any business um, is, is set up, typically there's different projects or different clients that a business has or different um, uh, different operational functions, right? So there might be one for marketing, there might be one for admin um, accounts and, and so on. Slack allows you to break up those channels and then be able to talk directly in them. So if you've got an accounts question to your team, you can add the members that are in there to that workspace and talk specifically about accounts. So the people in admin, well, probably admin, but the people in operations, um, they can have a look. But if they're in, they're in that work, uh, in that channel. But if they're not, they're not sort of distracted by the noise that's happening in the business, right? So use those channels to be able to break it up into clients or whichever for clients projects whatever works for you so that you can help organize your your mind and your business and the people that need direct that are in the need to know for that particular channel so use a tool if you're not already using a slack um, look into that if you're using something else and it's been working really well for you uh, love for you to share in the comments comments below uh, always open to learning learning new things. Slack's been really good for us. We're, I think we're still on the free version. So there's still so much you can do just on the free version. There are a few shortcomings with the free version of Slack because I don't, you can't save, I think messages more than 30 days or, or so get wiped, wiped off. So if it's important for you to keep those messages, then you might want to look at the, the paid version. Um, number two, the other, the other tool that we use is a task management tool called ClickUp. So ClickUp, uh, again, it's a task management tool like Asana, Trello, Monday, Pipedrive. Um, there's so many out there, Basecamp, and it, it just comes down to picking one that that you sort of uh, get used to and actually use. All right. So the point is you got to use it. Um, again, my EA is probably having a, a giggle um, now because she's like, you don't use your ClickUp very much, but she looks after me. She sort of is, again, my accountability partner there. So ClickUp, what, again, similar to Slack, and you can integrate ClickUp and, and Slack or whichever task management tool you have, either directly or, or through um, Zapier, and create these projects and break them up. So you can create projects in in your task management tool, and then be able to say, these are the subtasks that need to be done. Who needs to do it? So you can allocate it, you can set the priorities, and you can set the dates. And the cool thing as well, it allows you to communicate about that particular project in the task itself. So everything stays in one place. You can attach things, you can, um, oh, what, what else can you do? You can create checklists. Right. So if it's a task that happens consistently, you can make it a recurring task and you can also make it a checklist. Right. So if it's something that has 10 steps and you do it every week, make that a recurring task. It will pop up each each time it's due and you just have to be able to go through the checklist. So again, it comes down to that consistency, being concise, um, reliability, because you've got you've got something that that triggers it um, uh, regularly and also the last thing is that it adds to being part of your systems and processes so for business owners what we're really talking about how can we improve our communication our systems and our outcomes so it allows you that to be able to step back from the day-to-day -day, the, the the back end of things the being being you know working on the business as opposed to in the business, but you need to have these systems and processes in place and clear communication to do that. Add along a superstar champion or a virtual assistant, whoever, a team member, and you're pretty much, um, you're pretty much basically got the, your hands on the money. Is that the term? 
I can't remember. But you know what I mean. You've got things figured out. You've got the right ingredients to be able to make make that sort of amazing amazing cake of business that you're you're looking for. So I hope that was sort of um, helpful for you. Again, we'd love to be able to hear and have you share your tips for communicating efficiently with your team, whether it's a remote team, whether it's a face-to-face -face team. It really is about that allowing people to feel that they're heard and allowing people to know that you trust them in doing things and no, and no one wants to micromanage. If that's not your thing, like most people, I'd say probably nine out of 10 people don't really enjoy being micromanaged. And that also for a leader is something that you shouldn't be doing because it takes up a lot of your energy and your time. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been good value to you. Um, if you're keen to, uh, again, share with us your experience with communicating with your team and, and the tools that you use, um, comment below. Uh, if you'd like to have a chat to us about building your remote team, you can PM me, um, private message me, or email me at Cheryl at the growth hub dot io. So it's io, not com, the growth hub. Thanks very much. Have an amazing Wednesday. Take care, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.